Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible. We also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Summer, and today we're investigating an application of a very prominent time series econometrics technique that is vector autoregression, or VAR for short. And we are not only investigating how to apply it very easily and flexibly in Excel, but also in the finance context, how to use the forecasts of a vector autoregression model to construct a simple trading strategy and also evaluate its performance. To evaluate our vector autoregression based trading strategy, we have got uh, eight years worth of stock price data for five prominent uh, US based stocks. And we might want to select some backtesting period and some properties of our strategy that we seek to evaluate. First of all, it is obviously important to not estimate our model in a forward looking way. So essentially, when you're evaluating a model and you're making a forecast, you um, must not include in the forecasting model any of the observations that occur after you're making a decision. So essentially, we have to estimate our vector autoregression model on a rolling window basis. For that, um, I'll use uh, some clever matrix multiplication tricks, and we need uh, a vector of constants and uh, a matrix of uh, daily stock returns uh, that we are interested in. So for a vector of constants, I just enforce one all the way down throughout the data set. And for daily returns, uh, let me express them as percentages. So I'll divide price of Apple, and this is today, by its price yesterday, multiply by 100, and subtract 100. So that's return in percentages, so 0.0855%. And I apply it throughout and all the way down. Uh, now, it's uh, important to have at least um, some amount of data to perform the forecasts. So let's have a, um, let's have a look at a one year look back. So essentially, uh, we'll start trading when they have got one year of data on our hands. So let's start trading at the end of 2016. Again, we have got data since year end 2015, but let's start investing in the um, year end 2016. So that would be $100 that we invest in our portfolio, uh, 30th of December 2016. Now, uh, the most important bit uh, is to figure out how you can use past returns uh, of your stocks to forecast future returns of stocks. So essentially here, if we go to the 30th of December, say, here uh, we have got one year worth of past data. So essentially, if we want to forecast the return of Apple, what we need to do is we need to simply apply the matrix multiplication function for the regression model. And essentially, it's going to be uh, a matrix multiplication um, exercise. So first we matrix multiply the transposed matrix of dependent variables. And here we can use lags of all stock returns and the constant to uh, explain uh, one day ahead returns of Apple. So essentially we have to re refer to the range of all returns we have available for the previous year. Then we multiply it on the right by the non-transposed vector of X. So here we have got the first step of our, our uh, regression model evaluation. Yeah, and that would be obviously as six by six matrix because we have got five explanatory variables. Those are lags of stock returns and the constant. The next step would be to invert this matrix. Then we would have to multiply it on the right by a transposed X again. I'll just copy that for um, brevity purposes and multiply it on the right once again by the column of our dependent variable Y. So if we're interested in Apple returns, 
we're trying to predict one day ahead returns of Apple. So it's going to be until today, and we'll have to start not from the first day, but from the second day to maintain the same shape of data. And if we do that, we have got a column of coefficients. So this would be the constant, and those would be autoregressive coefficients of Apple's return on lagged, one day lagged returns of the five remaining stocks. So that would be Apple's reaction to return of itself yesterday. That would be its reaction to the return of the second stock, that is Google, last day. That would be its reaction to Microsoft. That would be its reaction to Walmart. And that would be its reaction to ExxonMobil, as stocks in our sample go in this order. So we can see that uh, return of Apple positively reacts to its own return. So there's some positive autoregression and to lagged returns of Google and somewhat to Walmart whereas it has got a negative reaction to returns of um, Microsoft and ExxonMobil. Uh, and obviously, if we apply it to, say, um, Microsoft, our third stock in the sample, we'll get the relevant coefficients for Microsoft as well. So we see that Microsoft, for example, negatively responds to its own returns, so there's some negative autoregression here, but positively responds to returns of Apple and Google and negatively respond to returns of um, Walmart and ExxonMobil in that case. But the idea is that we can calculate those coefficients in one go for all five of our stocks of interest, and that would produce a matrix of relevant coefficients. And here we see that in the first column, we'll have already familiar coefficients that we obtained for Apple, and in the third column, we'll have already familiar coefficients that we obtained for Microsoft. And now the final step that needs to be made is to use those coefficients because ultimately for trading purposes, we're interested not in coefficients, but in forecasts. We have to matrix multiply that on the left by our uh, input data, which essentially is what's happening today and the constant, obviously. And that produces five forecast returns for the next trading day based on the returns that we observe today and the constant obviously so we believe that apple the first stock that we have got in our sample will go down and we believe that the remaining four stocks will go up by different amounts so for example ExxonMobil will go up by the most by this by the highest amount and now we can convert our forecasts into trading signals or uh, weight construction and let's start with the simplest possible idea, which is that we invest in stocks that have got positive returns and do not invest in stocks that have negative returns. And if we invest in stocks, we invest in them in an equally weighted way. Again, a very simple, very basic strategy, but it's enough to see how the idea of using vector autoregression to forecast markets performs in this particular instance. So in this case, we have to um, divide a signal if our return is greater than zero than one and zero otherwise. And then we'll have to divide it by the number of positive return signals so that we maintain a sum of weights of 100%. The only exception would occur if all stocks are forecasted to go down and then our strategy would uh, not be uh, interested in investing in any stock whatsoever. So then we'll have to stay in cash. So basically all weights will be zero. And in that case, we'll have to prevent a zero by zero uh, division uh, uh, error. So essentially, we need to divide it by the maximum of the count if our returns are positive and one. So in this case, we have got 0% of our capital invested in Apple and 25% invested into each of the remaining four stocks, namely Google, Microsoft, Walmart, and ExxonMobil. And now we can calculate the portfolio return for the next day, because remember, we calculated the forecast for this day, the following day, the 3rd of January 2017, based on the returns we observed on the 30th of December 2016. So essentially here we have to use the sum product function, multiplying the next day returns by the previously determined portfolio weights. And we see that on the 3rd of January 2017, 
our strategy enjoyed a return of 0.68%. And we can accordingly update our portfolio value by multiplying the portfolio value in the previous day by 1 plus the return divided by 100 because it's reported in the, as a percentage. And we see that now our portfolio value is $100.68. What is useful now is that we can uh, just update our model every single day, provide a new forecast, provide a new trading recommendation, and then uh, update our portfolio and update the next day return. The uh, only uh, caveat here is that if we do not lock any of those cells and just apply it throughout, then the model will have a constant uh, look back window of a year. If we would like to uh, apply a model and uh, add to uh, the data that already knows, so essentially increase the sample size of the model uh, consecutively, we just have to lock um, the rows on the first um, of our observation. So we'll have to lock this and that. But let's try without uh, um, ever increasing. Um, let's try the model with the constant look back and not um, a sample that continuously increases. So for that, I'll just enforce my forecasts throughout and I'll enforce my weights throughout. And that means that I can calculate portfolio returns for the entirety of the period and uh, build an equity curve of um, my, my portfolio value. And now let's evaluate how well our portfolio performs. So uh, we can calculate uh, annualized returns of our stocks in the portfolio, uh, annualized volatilities of those, and sharp ratios given some assumption on the risk free rate. Let's say risk rate is 4%. So for Apple, we can calculate um, annualized return by dividing its price uh, at the end of 2023 by its price at the end of 2016. Again, that's seven years past to raise it to the power of one seventh and subtract one. So basically that's percentage return. If we want to report it as a percentage, we can times it by 100 and subtract 100. And dragging it across, we see that uh, our portfolio in this instance has got a reliable, quite uh, sizable return of 23.64%, which is uh, smaller than the returns of Apple and Microsoft and larger than the returns of Google, Walmart, and ExxonMobil. And in terms of the risk, we can calculate the sample standard deviation of our returns during the phase that we invested in. So essentially, uh, that would be Apple. And then to uh, refer to it on an annualized frequency, we can uh, multiply both square root of 252. And we see that the risk of our portfolio is actually uh, quite low. It's lower than the risk of all individual stocks. Again, that's the ratio of portfolios. That shouldn't be surprising. And if we look at the sharp ratio, we can simply subtract the risk free rate from our return and divide it by the respective volatility. And we see that in terms of the sharp ratio, our portfolio outperforms all of the individual stocks, including Apple and Microsoft that enjoyed quite spectacular performance over the past seven years. Uh, but now let's uh, investigate some uh, tweaks that we can make to the model. First of all, we can more strongly express our preference towards stocks with high expected returns. In this um, point, we can tweak our weighting um, estimation. So essentially, uh, we would be uh, interested in saying that, that if uh, my forecasted uh, stock return is greater than zero, then we input its value and zero otherwise, and then we'll divide by the max of sub if of those returns if um, they're greater than zero. So essentially uh, scaling it all to uh, match total weight of one and some small number if um, we uh, have got no positive returns to prevent the division by zero error. So let's say 0 0.0001. And here we see we have got um, slightly different allocations. So here we invest 53% uh, of our capital towards ExxonMobil because we 
predict that it's going to be, have the highest return, and only a small amount, say roughly 6% of our capital, into the second stock, Google, because we believe it will have a smaller positive return. And this can be updated throughout, and we can see that this particular procedure does improve the return of the portfolio quite a bit and makes it outperform the individual stocks even to greater extent because here, despite uh, increasing our risk somewhat because we have got more concentrated allocations to stocks that we forecast will have higher returns, we have got uh, a much um, higher return that does provide for that. Now, additionally, we can also tweak how the model looks back. So here we are uh, for essentially forgetting uh, what happened more than a year ago, and that can be prudent if uh, the market conditions change very fast and uh, what happened, let's say, two years ago is no longer relevant for the dynamics of the market. But if we believe it is relevant, then we can lock the rows on our X and Y um, matrices, and that would provide forecasts based on ever-expanding um, sample of our returns. And we can see that this does absolute wonders to our portfolio performance because now it outperforms the stocks not only on risk-adjusted uh, return basis, but also on raw return basis with the portfolio yielding 33% per annum. Um, essentially, this is the simplest way on uh, in how vector autoregression and time series econometrics can be used to generate uh, portfolio management uh, signals. And uh, you can see that uh, under various circumstances and if um, constructed right, this strategy can deliver uh, quite uh, impressive returns, quite impressive performance. Uh, obviously, that relies on market inefficiency. It relies on returns being predictable by using prior returns. So keep that in mind when using uh, time series econometrics for uh, trading strategies. But if you do not believe in uh, weak form market efficiency and you uh, do um, spot various uh, over or under reaction patterns, positive or negative autocorrelation in returns, then these models can be quite powerful in terms of forecasting and in terms of trading applications. Uh, obviously, more advanced applications of vector autoregression could include the um, synthesis of those forecasted returns with some forecast of the covariance matrix, and then we can do uh, modern portfolio theory with our forecasted returns, which would be a quite interesting exercise. But in practice, uh, it is uh, quite often that simpler applications that do not uh, rely on multiple theories being true on the same uh, time work much better in terms of their uh, practical usability, so in terms of their returns, say. Uh, so that's all there is for the applications of vector autoregression to forecasting stock returns and forming trading strategies. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm looking to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it supports on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.